This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now home, getting ready for a slightly unusual uh, degradation test. We have the BMW i3 here from Elbil Mac. It's been sitting in the sun. It has been charged 100%. I have opened the windows and, well, actually the doors, the suicide doors, to vent out the car because I don't want to use the HVAC system. So, um, yeah, let's get ready. So this is a bit uh, unusual in the sense that uh, I have to bring Isabel with me. There is no other way. The in-laws, they left yesterday and now it's freaking chaos, man. Isabel, are you, are you okay, baby? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The new word you heard was... Uh, okay, Isabel. Alles good. Alles good. Alles good. Okay, <laughs> and then, and then, you little cutie, you little cutie. Okay, but uh, she's now in the shade here. I'm gonna move her into the car soon, and then uh, let's uh, make all the preparations. Okay, we're on the move. I had to start quickly now. So you see that we just reset uh, the BC, yeah, it actually says BC here, board computer. We reset the BC, we are at 100% now. We are at uh, 90.8 amp hours supposedly, and the car has done 130, uh, 138,000 kilometers. So I want to know the degradation. Uh, it claims to be 90% state of health, but I think it's not that bad. Uh, that means 10% degradation. It could seem like, uh, according to my measurement uh, during 1,000 kilometer challenge, that we have around 7% degradation or 93% state of health. So that's what this test is all about. So uh, we just have to start driving now. I just fire up, fire up the AC. So then eventually I'm gonna close the windows, but I uh, just want to vent out here so that it doesn't get too hot in the back. And then Isabel is in the back here. Yeah, she has to ride with me because uh, Axel is with mommy or Amory, and we have no babysitter now. So it's quite chaotic right now. I, I cannot get anything done as long as the kids or one of them are awake. Here we're now on the motorway and the plan is just to drive one direction until we have around 50, I don't know, 55% left roughly and then we turn back. So yeah, we'll cruise at 90 kilometers per hour on GPS. It will actually simulate a 90 kilometers per hour test, but this is to minimize the losses, discharging losses if we hammer too hard. So uh, yeah, and then uh, Isabel is in the back there. I think she's gonna fall asleep soon. We also time this, it's one in the afternoon. Typically around noon until afternoon is when she wants to take a nap. So then she can just nap in the seat. It's, um, I'll try to show you here. This is Cybex Cloud Set 2 and it's very comfortable for uh, Isabel to sit in there and even sleep there. So yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, she will only be there for about one and a half I'm not sure, two, two hours unlikely. We're not gonna go 180 kilometers, even though the car claims 167 or something, but yeah, I'm yeah, guessing maybe almost 150 kilometers. We'll see. We are now at Strandlicio, and uh, we've done 47 kilometers, 48 now. Consumption is only 153 watt hour per kilometer. Very good. We're now down to 77%, maybe hard to see it there, but um, it could seem that we could drive 200 kilometers total. We'll see about that. So Isabel is asleep now. <laughs> I could even hear her snore. So that's why I have to talk and not too loud. And just keep driving. We are getting close to Hama, and then based on the trip meter here and the consumption, we can calculate how many kilowatt hours we spend. And then also, if you look at how many percent we have left, Right now it seems like we have 31 kilowatt hour, but it's not. So the state of charge scale here is non-linear. Yeah. Wait, huh? I thought it was linear on the German cars. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe the previous generation German cars like this car is non-linear. We are at Hama. I'm gonna turn around. We have 58%. Can you see here, baby? Maybe the, the 58%. Yeah, I think that's good enough because the scale is non-linear. So I also have to take into account that on the way back we might have higher consumption because of wind. So alright, turn around here and then head back to Yes home. 
we are getting close to Nebanez now and uh, yeah the baby in the back is awake yeah the bell is awake yo what's up okay we have done 150 kilometers now and well I can throw here maybe 150 kilometers and 26 percent and then wait, 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 I had to show you guys consumption 144 watt hour per kilometer. Had head we had tailwind on the way back. Yeah, headwind on the way north. You can see this the flag there is there the yeah there we go. Wow. Okay. Simply amazing consumption on this BMW. So yeah, we're almost there. Around 25, like 30 kilometers left. And that should be a good measurement. Well we're almost done. Now we are taking the E16 route towards uh, uh, yeah, whatever, it's not too relevant, uh, Kongsvinge. But uh, we're down to 11%. Oh, but look, look, look at the trip meter. 181 kilometers done. Wow. Okay, all right, Isabel, daddy needs to go deep, okay? So, let's go. Isabel, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go. Maybe Isabel is ready for Arctic Circle, huh? huh? You want to go Arctic Circle, Isabel? Yeah. And then. And then. And then. Okay, we're almost home now. We have five kilometers away, roughly. And we have nine kilometers of range, yeah. All right, Isabel, we're almost home, baby. Daddy just needs to go deep in the cleavage. Well,. You like the cleavage, baby? Yeah. All the babies like cleavage. <laughs> okay. Okay, almost done. Wow, 190 kilometers. Wow. We are finally home. Uh, Isabel is grumpy. Baby, we are home now. We are home. Okay, I think she need, she wants to be... She said men, being pampered, which means smelly, change diaper. Okay, okay. All right, but stats, we are at 3.5% left. And here's the stats, 195 kilometers, 141 watt hour per kilometer, wonderful. Also, more accurate numbers here, 195.0. Okay, 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 let's eject the baby first. Okay, I parked the i3 in the garage, we plug in, started charging. And then Isabel got a bun as a prize for <laughs> coming with me. But okay, so based on the test today, you see that... Um, uh, okay, I forgot to mention, this is a 2017 i3, so it's... Uh, seven years old and then yeah uh, based on what we measure now we have roughly six percent degradation and then what is the whole degradation per cycle well it's an estimation of how many cycles the car has done i don't know exactly how many because the car does not log that but based on that you know that is that makes more sense than just looking at the degradation because you also have to look at how many kilometers each car have driven so <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, sit, sit with daddy, baby. So based on that, you see that the result is actually very good. It is right on top that with one of the other, well, German cars or Ionic, huh? Really impressive stuff, man. Six percent degradation only, <laughs> and it, it is a relatively small battery. So what you can do is you can look at another test I did with Millennium Falcon, but that's a lot bigger battery, roughly more than twice as big, and it also has okay some degradation but yeah okay whatever uh, you can interpret the numbers the way you want it but uh, this is the way i try to interpret the numbers so really impressive man of the bmw this is also what i measured in the 70 no 42 kilowatt hour 120 amp hour and also the 22 kilowatt hour 60 amp hour seems like the bmw they chose a good chemistry that doesn't degrade that much so yeah it's going to be pretty hard for the sun now to argue against EVs, right? <laughs> okay, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. And yeah, I have to mention one last thing. Yeah, if you guys, the, the haters will be like, Ah, oh, Bjorn, I like your videos, but uh, why can't your wife take care of two babies at once? I mean, or at least Isabel and the newborn. Well, the problem is that Axel, the newborn, it, he cries a lot and when we carry him he tends to calm down but but as soon as we lay him down in the bed 
he will start crying. He wants to be held all the time. Even when we use the, we have, um, oh, what is it called again? We have a thing that moves, you know, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. we have that one. We have a, a shaker thing that we put on the bed. We try everything. We have the shusher also. That means the shusher sound. We try the, uh, the water, waterfall sound, you know, all that stuff doesn't work unfortunately so plus that wifey went through c-section recently so she has a big big wound here and she's not uh, advised to lift anything heavy and isabel is oh are you heavy no, sorry, are, you, are you are you cold baby yeah daddy daddy is a heater yeah isabel is 11 kilograms now i think that's around 20 pounds right so it's not advice for isabel for wifey to lift something heavy so that's why as soon as wifey recovers maybe in about a month then situation should be a lot better and i also don't want to drive around with isabel all the time because uh, she might get grumpy she might be bored she want to play run around and stuff yeah i'm gonna walk with isabel and uh, dolly soon uh, and then of course if i hope not but if i would end up in, in an accident i don't want to have isabel with me <laughs> i mean Practically said, speak, technically said, it is better that I die alone than that I bring Isabel with me. But we're not going to hope for that, of course. Um, anyway, yes, that's it. Bye-bye.